Good morning. Good afternoon. Just noon. Good noon. Oh, a little motorcycle action out there to uh, kick us off instead of a theme song. I hope you're doing well today. Today is September 23rd. Saturday, noon Eastern Standard Time, and you are uh, watching, listening to Wonders Roots, Your Health from the Ground Up. My name is Becky, Rebecca Montrone. I have a practice here in Keene called Wonders Roots. I am an holistic health uh, practitioner with a degree in holistic nutrition, and I am certified through the American Association of uh, Drugless Practitioners. Our office uh, suite here, uh, I say our, because uh, my husband and I, and then we have a uh, lovely staff of uh, Mary and Sue. Um, we, we are here up on the third floor of the Miller Forge building, Monday through Friday, 9, 9.30 to five. And we have a lot of fun, cool, health related things happening all the time. Whether it's formulating a new project, a pro product, uh, making the product, packaging the product, labeling, um, then all of the things that go into getting them on the web and, uh, and getting them out on our website, that kind of thing, doing all this. There's always tons to do, but it's always really great, encouraging, um, what do I want to say, uh, vibrant stuff that we do. And uh, just absolutely love it. Love all of you, my clients, my customers, uh, those who uh, have been following me and who uh, take part in the Wonders Roots family. Uh, it's so grateful. And so, uh, yes, we are open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to five. Our number here at the office is 603-439-2603. You can reach out to me from wondersroots.org. If you go to contact us, uh, shoot me a message and I will get back to you. If you uh, go to shopwondersroots.com, uh, you will also see a, a way you can do that there. And um, so anyway, I look forward to hearing from you and always enjoy uh, your feedback and uh, your enthusiasm for what we're doing here. And I just love that I can uh, share with um, all of those who are interested. So just uh, by way of introduction, let's see, uh, let's go back to um, the Zoom kind of, uh, you know, protocol, how you can interact. <clears throat> you will see at the bottom of your screen, a chat um, box, and you can uh, just put something right into the chat there. If you hit on that, it'll give you a place to type. If you want <clears throat> me to see it only, you can select that. Or if you want everybody to see it, you can select that. Uh, there's a Q&A option and you can put your questions in there and then I'll see them and probably answer um, right here live. Uh, you can raise your hand if you want to talk and I would love that. So if you wanna talk and um, and have a conversation with me here today, this uh, during this hour, we'll be, on, uh, be here till one o'clock, then uh, please feel free to do that. I, I will see the raised hand and then I will uh, uh, welcome you on. That's, I think that's all I need to say. Uh, if I missed anything, somebody let me know. I do wanna say uh, last Saturday, um, Dale got up on, uh, on the uh, live on the web, our own YouTube channel. And a lot of you already know that, but I really love that because we now have a much easier way for you to catch these podcasts after the fact. And I would encourage you just to go to our YouTube channel and newsletter today, you will see a link to the actual channel page where you can subscribe and then you can check and see what we're doing. We're going to, I'm going to be doing a, a many series actually. For years, I have wanted to get out information on, you know, all the things I talk about, glutathione, 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 um, and, and so many other topics as we discuss here, um, as we have through the years on my radio program and, uh, and whatnot. But I'm going to be doing short clips, like, okay, so like five minute clips. So you're not in for, okay, I gotta hear this for an hour. Uh, so I'll do like a series on glutathione and maybe start out, what is glutathione? Um, why are we deficient, right? Five minutes. And then um, what, what forms of glutathione are available, are bioavailable and, and talking about N-acetylcysteine versus reduced glutathione versus IV glutathione versus acetylglutathione. 
uh, perhaps doing, uh, oh, just on a million things I can think of. And you know, if you come into my office, and often if you don't come into my office, I will send you as attachments via email, or I will put in your packet when you order things, informational sheets that have to do with various topics. Because my passion has always been about sharing information. We have so much more power than we know. And we don't know we have it if we don't know. And knowledge is power is another one of my favorite quotations. So that's what this is all about. This is about um, sharing things that will, that I'm intrigued about that have made my life better, make my life better. And things that I think that you're interested in for yourself, for your loved ones, for, for, for just to know. So I'm really excited about doing that. And I think that that will be um, a great, so I've wondered, you know, in the past, can I like, can I put all these articles I have up on, um, up on my website so people can go to glutathione and click all these different articles? Well, that's not only a huge um, undertaking, it takes a lot of time, but it, these, a lot of my files are so big, if they're PDFs and things, they're hard to do uh, that with. So I think that this is gonna be just great. and. Um, I hope you're you're excited about that because uh, we are. I think I might do a couple of them today after we finish this um, while I'm sitting here. Um, and you know me, I can always talk. So uh, yeah, so that's that's that. You can also, if you go to wondersuits.org, you'll see podcasts now where it used to say radio podcasts. If you hit on that, you can also pick up the YouTube channel. You can pick up the YouTube I, um, individual um, presentations of our Zooms, recordings of our Zooms here on Saturdays. And you can also find there the newsletter that goes with, because if you don't have that in front of you, uh, say you decide you want to watch, but you're not going to scramble through your email, where did I put that newsletter, right? So they're just conveniently right there. So trying to think of all the things that make this as easy as possible. And we really... Um, appreciate your participation. It makes it so, it's a community. I really feel we have a, a beautiful community here. So I thank you for being part of it. Today, I wanna to talk about omega fatty acids. That's what we've been talking, I've been talking about nutrients for, so, oh, I don't know, most of this year, talking about why are we so sick? And we uh, started out with missing nutrients and we went through uh, a lot of them, uh, lithium, trace mineral lithium. It's so funny that that would come. Oh, that's another good uh, little topic, right? For a five minute blurb. Um, but we talked about that. It's kind of funny that I would mention that first because it seems so little, it seems kind of confusing uh, because we normally think of bipolar medication when we hear the word lithium or batteries. Um, but also um, the fact that it's, a, it's just, we just need it as a trace mineral, but it's so missing from our water supply. And it's so important when it comes to getting taking advantage of other very important nutrients such as B12 and folate. We talked about the B vitamins as well. We talked about <clears throat> iodine. Uh, we talked about um, magnesium. Oh gosh, vitamin A, vitamin D. We, we went through uh, B vitamins, uh, selenium, trace minerals, just a lot of nutrients that we don't normally <clears throat> think about. Am I getting enough of this nutrient? And, and then what might be a, a, a skew might be off if I'm not. And so uh, one of the things I have to say in my dietary supplement regimen, my own, that um, I never do, and that's uh, an omega, any fatty acid supplement. I don't do any. Um, I'm like, oh, blast, you know, they're big pills. Um, I do everything else, you know, I eat healthy. Um, but I think it's a whole for me. And, and so, uh, I, and I know it is now, and I'm going to be taking um, a supplement, a liquid I, I got from Carlson, a supplement, and it's a high super omega. It's a liquid. It tastes fine. It does not taste fishy, and it doesn't repeat. Um, and then today, uh, researching for this, I found out, you know, I've heard about green-lipped mussels before, New Zealand mussels, and their uh, big uh, contribution to the omega fatty, uh, omega three fatty acid uh, profile. And, but I learned much more about that. So I'm going to be doing those as well. So I'm going to show you 
um, my hand. Now my hand looks a lot better than my grandmother's did at this age. And my, my dear mother never got to this age, but her fingers were doing this too. But do you see that? Those are called Heberden's and Bouchard's nodes. They make my fingers, look at my little one. It doesn't wanna like, but they hurt, they hurt. And I don't want to hurt. I don't want hands that hurt anymore. <clears throat> so I am going to be loading up on the uh, green lip muscle um, uh, oil, well, powder, whatever it's called. It's got a name, we'll get into it in a minute. Hang on, come on. And <clears throat> be looking at that and how we can use that. You know, yeah. I, I tried to find muscle uh, recipes for green lipped muscles. And I found, you know, plenty. And I put a couple in my newsletter to start when I was doing this last night. And, um, and then I thought, but then where do we get these green lipped muscles? So I went online. I'm thinking somebody must distribute them a really good green lip muscle that you can buy frozen. Um, you know, cause they do that with all kinds of things. Well, the only companies I could find that I could get them from at all were, um, you know, New Zealand and, uh, you can't, you can't ship from New Zealand, um, frozen muscles or, you know, so anyway, I left those recipes out, but if you can ever get your hands on green lip muscles, or you can do the same recipes with any muscles, <clears throat> but we'll talk about why the green lip muscles are a little bit special when it comes to this, um, omega fatty acid. It is omega-3, but it's different than the um, EPA or the DHA that we're used to. It actually um, contributes ETA, which I have to admit I had never heard of. So without further ado, I'll get going. I have my newsletter here. And if you are seated and you can follow along, if not, you can always check everything out later. Again, have a lot of links there that you can follow. Look, and then a lot of times when you hit one link, it, you can get bunny trails to another one and kind of go off on your own exploration if you want to do that. But uh, so here we go. Omega-3 fatty acids benefits for the heart, brain, joints, and more. And I really loved, um, I know I, a lot of times I use Dr. Josh Axe's um, information from the internet. And I really loved his page on this. So we're gonna spend quite a bit of time uh, in his information here. Uh, yeah. And he did actually write this as well. So a lot of times he has contributing writers, but uh, very good uh, handling of this. <clears throat> so let's just go, you know, I know I read to you and I hope that doesn't bother you, but it's better than me just trying to like, okay, I read this and now let me summarize. I'm just gonna read it to you um, and kind of skip around a little bit, but. He says, um, omega-3s for omega-3 fatty acids have earned a great deal of respect in the health community, but do you know what omega-3s are? What are the benefits of omega-3s? And could you be deficient in these fatty acids? So um, the most commonly known health perk of omega-3s is reduced risk of heart disease. Um, that's what we've definitely, uh, that's definitely the thing, I would say the big thing that omega-3 fatty acids have been touted for. Um, but they also assist in fetal development, vision, a lot of vision problems today, skin health. Now, a lot of people say to me, I don't care how much water I drink. My skin is always dry. And, uh, maybe that's you and maybe it isn't. Um, uh, okay. So I have somebody to, um, you know, Kathy, okay, I'm going to get Kathy on here for a second, and it's going to take me just a minute to do that. I've got to send her the link. But when I got my first um, email of this, it was half the email. It was not the full email. And I was like, what the heck happened? But then it came to my Rebecca at Wondersroots. It came to my second address, and it was fine. But one of my um, faithful listeners said she never got the link. And if you got the half version of that newsletter, you never got the link. So I'm just going to answer her email and send it to her. And then once she's here, I'll explain it a little bit more to her. Okay. And then let me also give her the, um, I need to give her also the uh, ID. 
Okay, just bear with me. This is much better than if I were on the radio, it would be very awkward. But then of course, you know, she wouldn't need it. So that's kind of not, it's kind of not, not even important to say. Okay. All right. So hopefully she will be with us very shortly. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of you were there. So <clears throat> I see it didn't happen to everybody. Oh, thank God. I hate that. You know, you get everything going, and then you get this technical thing that how many times has that happened to us? Mm. Okay, so omega-3s are a specific type of polyunsaturated fatty acid. That means they contain more than one double bond in their chemical structure. The number three refers to where in the chemical structure the first double bond occurs. You don't, we will not get quizzed on that. <clears throat> so uh, why do you need omega-3 fatty acids? Your body is able to synthesize saturated fatty acids. Um, yeah, so think about that. You can make those um, in your body, but you cannot make um, unsaturated fatty acids. So um, you don't have an enzyme that allows you to stick a double bond in the right spot to create omega-3s yourself. So they do have to be... Um, taken from externally, either in your food or in supplement form. <clears throat> in other words, your body can't make these fats on its own. So you need to, I just said that. Your body also needs omega-6s. We've heard a lot about those and usually it's derogatory in the, in the health world. Um, so you can, can uh, you need to get them from your diet in or, or okay. Your body also needs omega-6s, another type of fatty acid to function properly and prevent disease. Omega-6s come in some form of linoleic acid. They are found in vegetable oils, safflower oils, meat, poultry, and eggs. And if any of you are followers of Dr. Joseph Marcola, uh, like I am, uh, he's lately been on a real rant uh, about the negative aspects of uh, linoleic acid. And I have said from the start, it's not the full story, that there is value to linoleic acid. It has to do with balance. It also has to do with source, but uh, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, these are found, the omega-6s, in much more abundance than omega-3s in the standard American diet, although your body craves a one-to-one -one ratio to keep inflammation low. Most modern diets, now this will show you how far off it is. Most modern di diets re, uh, contain a ratio closer to 20 to one or 30 to one. They're supposed to be one to one. So we get so many omega-6 fatty acids from processed food. Um, whatever it is that oils are added to, fats, you name it, um, things in a box, we're getting a lot of omega-6 and not the healthy kinds. Common types of omega-3. So we'll start with alpha linoleic acid and we're gonna start with that one and you're gonna find it as uh, I read along that um, the ALA is not nearly as beneficial to uh, your health as the EPA and, and the um, DHA, and then we'll talk about the ETA as well. <clears throat> but the plant, these are the plant-based omega-3s uh, three found in green leafy vegetables, flax seeds, chia seeds, and canola, uh, walnut, and soybean oils. Although thankfully he says these rancid oils are not ones I generally recommend. ALA is known as a short chain omega-3. Now this is important because it means your body has to convert it into the longer chained EPA and DHA for it to be of any use to you. And, and this process is rather inefficient. Only about 10% of the ALA you consume converts to the long chain version your body needs. So that's really important. We're in a big um, push for the plant-based diet. Uh, plant-based this, plant-based that. Um, <clears throat> if you wanna add something to your to your uh, advertising on your product, on your packaging, you say it's plant-based because that's supposed to also make sure it keeps the carbon footprint down. And that's super important. And we also just want to think, you know, that there's something wrong with animal food. Um, 
But no, if you are relying on your chia seeds and your flax seeds and your walnuts, which I mean, I love the health properties of those things, which go way beyond omega-3, um, then you're not, you know, don't. It's like, it's the same thing as like relying on beta carotene for your vitamin A. That's not vitamin A. It, in some people, converts to vitamin A, but it's not the vitamin A, vitamin A, true vitamin A comes from fish, liver, oil, and that's not plant-based. So just when I was looking for omega-3 fatty acid recipes, I'm like, boy, I had to really weed through the popular stuff today that is all about, um, is all about plant-based. Oh, it was like, have your chia seeds, have your flax seeds, you know, that this would be really fantastic. And um, you can kind of get the feeling that you are, are, you are, you're, you're, you're doing something to get your fatty, your omega-3s and that that's just going to do it for you, but it ain't. Okay. So it says, um, <clears throat> oh, this pro process is rather inefficient and only about 10% of the ALA you consume is converted to the long chain version your body needs. Although per this percentage is slightly higher for women. So um, the EPA, the ICO, I hope I don't have to say this too many times, the ICO, Sapentanoic Acid, the EPA, we shall know it as, is a 20 carbon fatty acid found in oily fish, algae, and krill oil. So, you know, there's a, a big push on, for krill too now, and a lot of people use it, and I do endorse krill oil for sure. Your body is able to synthesize this molecule in its original form. EPA and DHA are the omega-3s your body needs in high quantities to achieve the benefits they offer. Uh, yes. So those are the ones we really think of EPA very much so for the heart, for the cardiovascular system, for that anti-inflammatory effect, as well as um, DHA, docosahexanoic acid, DHA. A 22 carbon molecule is also found in oily fish, krill oil, algae oil, and omega-3 fish oil supplements. <clears throat> That's really interesting because um, algae oil. So some people want, really don't want <clears throat> animal and they, they will go to the algae oil. And that's okay. That's different than the chia and flaxseed and walnuts and soy. Um, so your body converts some DHA molecules back to EPA in order to keep them at fairly equal levels if you consume more DHA. I like that. Um, you, you've kind of got a balancing effect there. So as you look at fish oil supplements, you will see this many milligrams EPA, this many milligrams DHA, and they're always in a certain kind of uniform ratio. But it's nice to kind of know that your body does that too, that there's supposed to be a balance there and your body knows um, innately how to do that. So your guide to, I, now I wanna go to the ETA, I kind of skipped around over that. And again, this was one I had not, was not aware of. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's the one that comes from the green-lipped muscle. ETA is a, it's eco-satetranoic acid, uh, ETA. ETA is a lesser known omega-3 fatty acid that also contains 20 carbons like EPA, but only four bonds instead of five. For those of you who are really into your chemistry and Kathy, I see you were there, you made it. I'm hoping you didn't get one of those shortened versions of the newsletter. I'll have to talk to you about that later because um, I got one that was and one that was right. Uh, um, <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> it is found richly in row oil Okay, so that's the oil from the fish row. And um, green, the green-lipped muscle. Not only is it anti-inflammatory like the other omega-3s, but the ETA can also limit your body's production of the inflammatory omega-6 fatty acid, ar arachidonic acid, um, arachidonic acid, otherwise known as ARA. And that's the really inflammatory prostaglandin um, <clears throat> fatty acid, ARA. In fact, 
ETA redirects the enzyme that normally creates ARA to convert it to EPA instead. And that's what really excites me about the ETA and the green lip muscle um, supplement for myself, because the ARA, this is what happens with an, a predominantly omega-6, um, a predominant omega-6 fatty acid diet, like that 20 to one ratio or the 20, 30 to one ratio. Um, it is a problem with now from that, we make this arachidonic acid and the arachidonic acid is itself inflammatory. So it's not only are the, are the omega-6 in, in out of whack like that, are they not anti-inflammatory, but they are inflammatory. They promote inflammation. So this is really cool. When you're taking the ETA, this is helping you to not make that conversion to the ARA, the arachidonic acid, which is the bad boy here in this discussion. Okay, so and go on down. <clears throat> so let's look at the benefits. I always love to do that. It's so much more, um, it helps you be disciplined to do something, to add something to your uh, regimen, if you will, to your budget. <laughs> to your daily uh, consumption of how many pills or, or whatever. It's, fun, it's much more inspiring if you instead know uh, why. And so that's why I'm going to be adding these things myself that I have just said, oh gosh, I get enough other stuff. I get, yeah, please, one more thing. Ah. Um, <clears throat> no, we're gonna see what happens. So anyway, um, good for heart health. One of the most well-known omega-3 benefits is the way they positively affect risk factors associated with heart disease and stroke, the leading causes of death worldwide. Studies show that adults who eat diets rich in fish tend to have low instances of these diseases. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved two omega-3 supplements, wahoo, uh, su supplement treatments for high triglycerides. But that is important because you know how they are about these things. They really drag um, <clears throat> when it comes to anything that comes from natural things. And triglycerides, high triglycerides are an issue for many. It's the first flag for me when I look at somebody's lipid panel. I don't, I'm not really uh, uh, concerned if I see a high total cholesterol. I think the recommendations for total cholesterol are just so arbitrary and so, um, you know, hard to interpret what's high for one person isn't high for another, <clears throat> even the LDL, right? But triglycerides, high triglycerides to me show a problem. They show a problem with the diet and they show a problem with things such as uh, pr propensity for fatty liver, etc. cetera. So um, <clears throat> one contains just one compound. The other contains two of the animal-based omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA. It says, while some studies and analyses have found no evidence indicating omegas 3s significantly reduce risk of stroke or heart attacks, other reviews disagree. And I think it has to do with the quantity. It has, I believe that's super important. So a lot of times people will say to me with their fish oil, because I'll recommend it to other people um, when I think it's appropriate and, and they need it. Um, you know what they say, physician heal thyself, but, um, you know, they'll say, I just take one. Uh, one might be a thousand. It breaks down to, I think, you know, we really have to look at dose. And I think that he does talk about that a little bit further in. <clears throat> Here's what we do know about cardiovascular disease risks, including strokes and heart attacks and omega-3s. And I think that this is an area of health all of us, every single person needs to look at. I don't care if it's not in your family history. Uh, the cardiovascular system, it was interesting because I was having a blast last night um, getting this newsletter together. And it was probably, I don't know, 1230 or so um, after, you know, after midnight. And I could hear at that point in time, I could hear I was getting tired because I could really hear my heart beating in my ear. And that's not, if that happens to you guys, that's not like a bad sign or anything. For me, it just means I'm tired. And I have a mitral valve prolapse. And once in that, in that time of the evening or the midnight when I was doing that, you know, I, I, I could hear it 
you know, flutter, which is just my um, occasional arrhythmia from the mitral valve prolapse, which is perfectly under control without any medication. Um, but under, but when you can hear your heartbeat in your ear, wow, you think this is go, I thought this is going on all the time and I'm not aware of it. And thank you heart. Because I mean, you have a job to do. And when you are done doing your job, I'm done on this planet. And I, it made me think, does the heart would naturally, as you get older, get tired, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? I know somebody has talked about, uh, I've often used this, about how if you have perfect health and nothing else gets you and you're, you're in your hundreds or whatever, eventually what will get you is your heart. Because it's not just the heart, it's also the arteries that, that come from the heart and lead to the heart and the pump the blood out and back in. And these are functioning. They are just like your heart. And so someone once said, think about a hose getting stepped on 60 or 70 times a minute every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, year after year after year after year after year. You're going to need to buy a new hose eventually because it's just not going to be able to withstand forever. So that's why I think it is especially important to pay attention to cardiovascular health and for everyone and, and, to, uh, and to take measures to really nourish that part of our body because it is doing everything for us. I mean, the brain and the heart, right? Without the brain and the heart, forget it. There's nothing and uh, nothing else. Every, every other organ system and the brain relies on the heart. So uh, let's be good to our, our hearts. Super important not to ignore cardiovascular health. So lowering high triglycerides, the American Heart Association recognizes that the highest amount of omega-3s are generally needed for people with high triglycerides. Uh, let me just do this too. Okay. And bear with me. A major risk factor for heart disease. Use of omega-3 supplements has been associated with lower triglyceride levels in patients with or without other diseases. Uh, regulating cholesterol and research finds omega-3 can affect cholesterol levels by raising HDL, good cholesterol. Although some results also find a slight increase in LDL, bad cholesterol too. But I don't call LDL bad cholesterol and a slight increase in the picture of overall cardiovascular health to me is a good thing because LDL has a huge role to play and that's in your immune system. So-called bad cholesterol can prevent you from getting sick. So-called bad cholesterol can prevent you from getting something serious like cancer. People with low cholesterol have documentedly much higher rates of cancer. So it's not so much the cholesterol, is it? It's the balance of the lipids, it's the balance, right? And I've talked before about the small particle LDL and I won't digress on that right now. I'll probably do that in a little short video. Um, lowering high blood pressure. One study found that three servings of salmon each week successfully lowered blood pressure in young, overweight people who people over an eight week period. While this is not definitive proof that omega-3s lower blood pressure, it's an encouraging preliminary result. Um, the, the DASH diet used to control hypertension also emphasizes fish for heart health. Preventing plaque buildup. Keeping arteries clear of damage, omega-3s may aid your body in preventing plaque buildup responsible for hardening of, and, re of, and restriction of the arteries. So let's talk about that. Right, prevent the inflammation that causes the damage to arteries in the first place. So this is the deal with plaque. Plaque patches up 
damaged tissue. You don't have perfectly healthy arteries and, and blood vessels and have plaque just arbitrarily collect. Plaque is forming a scab, an internal scab. So you gotta stop the damage from the first, in, in the first place. We talked about that in the, um, the program I did on vitamin C. Linus Pauling saying, you gotta keep the collagen intact in your arteries or you're going to have cracks and crevices and damage from inflammation that now has to be patched up with a very ugly patch called plaque and um, arterial plaque. So this is uh, how the omega-3 plays into that whole equation of arterial plaque is stopping the damage in the first place, preventing the need for a, for a patch, for a plaque patch. <clears throat> Reducing meta, and of course it's, um, oh, there's my phone. Hmm. Just ignore, I do have an answering machine. <clears throat> Reduce metabolic syndrome, sim syndrome symptoms, okay? That's super important. That's, that's what leads to diabetes. The cluster of risk factors known as metabolic syndrome usually includes, includes abdominal obesity, high blood sugar, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, and low HDL cholesterol, the so-called good cholesterol. These risk factors are indicative of a high chance you might develop heart disease, stroke, or diabetes. They all come together in a cluster. That's a good thing, right? Because they're not, while they might be looked at as individual branches, they're, it's really about the roots, the roots. So great, if you can address the things that are behind that, such as, um, furnishing yourself with omega fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, then you are going to help turn off this uh, progression of this, you know, um, cluster of bad stuff all in one. Uh, what do we say here? Um, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. Yeah, not good. There's, how much of that is around today? Whoa. It's all over the place. At, at, you know, more people suffer from this. I would, I know, is true than don't. And so, um, you know, I just really would say, uh, pay attention to your cardiovascular health. It is, it is center. It is very root, very root, way down root. <clears throat> May fight mental disorders and decline. There are a number of conditions related to brain and mental health that seem to improve when people, when individuals get good omega-3s. Depression and anxiety, lots of that around. Some research suggests that people who regularly get quanti large quantities of omega-3s are less likely to be depressed than those who are deficient. Several studies have demonstrated that people suffering signs of depression and or anxiety often see improvements after adding an omega-3 supplement to their routines. Even in double blind, randomized controlled trials, at least one study comparing a common depression medication found omega-3 supplements to be just as effective in combating depression symptoms. Wow. This is the thing, I was talking with uh, one of my clients the other day, and again, big pharma, we need them. We don't need big pharma, pharmaceutical medications, medications that contain drugs, right? We need from time to time. But usually, most often, they come with a risk or risks. So just watch any of the drug ads on TV. Wow. I mean, they tell you the benefits and then the lists are a mile long, a list of negative effects, possible negative effects are a mile long. Um, what I love about something like this using fish oil is that, say you're using that for your depression. Well, at the same time, you're helping your heart. At the same time, you're helping your blood sugar. At the same time, you know, all of that, so really wonderful. <clears throat> Certain studies, but not all, comparing omega-3 uh, levels in children have discovered those with ADHD diagnoses have lower blood omega-3 fatty acids compared to healthy comparison subjects. And that's been around for a long time, we've known that, and that's always a recommendation when I work with people with those issues. Limited but promising results seem to agree 
that there is um, likely some effectiveness of omega-3s for managing ADHD symptoms. And I would say again, <clears throat> the high DHEA is D, not DHEA, DHA. Oh, that's a good thing to remind you of, remind everybody of. DHA is not the same thing as DHEA. DHEA is a hormone. Um, <clears throat> DHEA, DHEA is a hormone made in the adrenal glands. And I did a whole program on that not long ago. DHA stands for that, uh, no, that fatty acid. <laughs> that I won't try to pronounce. Uh, schizophrenia. One meta-analysis investigating the link between omega-3s and schizophrenia found modestly positive results with higher consumption, specifically in the early stages of the disease. And you know, because it says specifically in the early stages of the disease, it makes me wonder if a lack of these fatty acids could predispose someone to developing schizophrenia. Um, just like a lack of vitamin D can predispose someone to um, developing an autoimmune illness. It makes me wonder if, if we see that someone who's just recently um, started on this path of schizophrenia um, responds better to bringing, well, that makes sense, right? It's not full bone, but it makes me think uh, about preventive would, you know, and making sure, and again, pregnancy related. Um, so many things are, uh, can be fixed ahead of time in the womb through proper nutrition. And uh, so definitely making sure our kids, and there's some really good um, children's supplements out there on the market today. A lot of um, good multivitamins from, from good uh, um, companies who understand the importance of certain forms of the B vitamins like folate and B12 that understand the importance of the DHA, the fish oil for kids. So that there's a lot of things you can do just to get for your children, um, vitamins that combine, you know, multivitamin, uh, formulas, nutrient formulas that combine those things and taste good, uh, relatively speaking and, um, that kids can, can use very important and reducing inflammation. So we've talked about that with regard to, to the heart, but inflammation, as we know, affects so many other uh, areas of our health. So um, one reason omega-3 fatty acids may be so beneficial to so many aspects of health could be that they help decrease system-wide inflammation, the root cause of most diseases. By eating a nutrient-dense and anti-inflammatory diet, you give your body its best chance to fight disease like it was designed to do. In particular, recent evidence has found that supplementing with omega-3s may reduce some inflammation caused by fat accumulation in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's a, another big problem we have today. And you know, I just think there's so much to be said about that, why? Uh, again, our toxic food supply, our, um, our ingestion of too much, uh, too much sugar, uh, too many, too many processed foods containing a lot of processed sugar and things like that. But, um, I would say the, um, you know, the, the trans fatty acids, uh, what have you, but, um, that non-alcoholic. So it's like, why, how can I have liver disease? I haven't had a drink. I've never had a drink in my life. And you can have a really you know, sick liver. So uh, an animal study involving the omega-3 ETA, now it's, this is going back to that green-lipped muscle, the ETA that stops the production of arachidonic acid, um, but converts, arach converts instead of to arachidonic acid, it converts it to, to um, EPA. So great, what a brilliant, brilliant, cool thing. <laughs> um, and discovered, so they discovered the subjects experienced a drop in overall inflammation similar to that caused by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, but without the dangers of NSAIDs, such as gastrointestinal side effects. Yes, get rid of your pain, but burn a hole in your stomach. Um, not good, not good. It, it, it's really good to get that inflammation down, not the best way to do it. Um, and very interesting. I was um, looking at um, uh, 
because I will, I will recommend to people to control their periods, to use a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory around the clock from the moment they get their period till they're not bleeding anymore, um, such as Advil or um, Aleve Motrin um, on a scheduled dose, because it really works to get that inflammation down. And I did find here that um, omega-3 fatty acids in one study, and I'll get to it, uh, seem to do better than the NSAIDs. Hmm. Can you imagine that instead of taking your relief or your Motrin or your Advil, taking your Advil every four hours, take, um, take another, you know, half a teaspoon of fish oil, fish liver oil. I don't know. Be something to have to experiment with somebody on. Um, <clears throat> okay. The study authors also pointed out that's that one that I was just talking about that um, the ETA seems to be even more potent for normal, supporting normal immune responses than the conven conventional omega-3s found in fish oil supplements, EPA, DHA. I think, well, at least for me, it's gonna be a combination of the three because um, I just, I'm excited about them. And I think um, getting them all would be like bumping it up a notch. Linked to preventing and managing autoimmune diseases characterized by the immune system attacking healthy cells, mistaking them for foreign intruders. Autoimmune conditions include diseases such as type one diabetes, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, multiple sclerosis, leaky gut syndrome, Crohn's of course, and many more. Multiple studies have found links between high omega-3 intake and a decreased risk of uh, autoimmune diseases or an improvement in autoimmune disease symptoms. So interesting, right? Because we do get omega-3s even in, in fish liver oil and we get our vitamin D and just wonder about this whole uh, thing because we know the connection between vitamin D deficiency and the development of autoimmune diseases later in life. Um, just thinking about these, um, these fish oils that are so important, um, preconcep preconception, pregnancy and after birth, uh, making sure, so please, uh, think about that. You, you're thinking about your own health, but now think about your the young ones coming up in your family, whether they're your own children or your grandchildren or your nieces, nephews, what have you. Um, this is important. And changes, the earlier you make a change for the better in your nutrition, the better result you're going to have for life. It's always great. Somebody in their 60s starts something and really turns turns the page for them, really makes a big difference. But wow, you know, often the comment is, I wish I'd known about this, you know, a long time ago. All right. Um, uh, oh yeah, so here we go. Multiple studies have found links between high omega-3 intake and a decreased risk for autoimmune diseases or an improvement in autoimmune disease symptoms. Some of these suggest, okay, the best protective effect comes when omega-3 fatty acids are consumed in the first year of life. Bingo. The earlier, the better. Super important. And that's great too, you know, because that's why you'll find uh, children's vitamin supplements with DHA added um, because the DHA is the fatty acid in the omega-3 that is specific for the brain. And the brain is not completely formed when the child is born. Uh, that goes on for months. Associated with lowered cancer risks. And through several epidemiological studies in which researchers observe trends in large population samples over time, it seems possible that adequate intake of omega-3 fats may be associated with a lowered risk of certain cancers. And people who consume more long chain fatty acids uh, EPA and DHA seem to have a reduced risk of colorectal cancer, according to observations in Scotland and China. After a large number of lab studies found that omega-3 fatty acids may be effective in slowing or reversing the growth of hormonal cancers, namely prostate cancer and breast cancer cells, those are big ones today, animal and human epidemiological studies have been conducted to see whether this effect occurred in real life scenarios. However, additional information on this topic is still warranted. Um, the evidence is somewhat conflicting in some reports, but there is some evidence to suggest breast cancer and prostate cancer may be potentially slowed 
or the risk reduced, right? The prevention, big thing. And people who eat a lot of oily fish and possibly those who supplement with omega-3. Think about, you know, your sushi eaters, right? Think about Japanese food, um, not just Japanese, but, um, you know, Thai or whatever, that, that whole um, Chinese, the whole sushi thing. Boy, you're getting tons, tons of these omega-3 fatty acids when you eat that way. And if you don't want to do the sushi, you don't want the rice, you know, you can do the, the sashimi, I think is what they call that. And just, uh, but, you know, people who eat like that all the time, like I have to say, I certainly, you know, I can't tell you when the last time I was, I had oily fish. I, it's been a long time since I've had salmon. That's going to change. Uh, a lab study in 2014 found that pancreatic cancer, the, the pan pancreatic cancer fighting impact of curcumin, the active ingredient in turmeric may be enhanced when combined with omega-3 fatty acids, encouraging further studies in animal and human models to investigate the potential of this combination. I wonder if that would be true too for, um, might possibly be true too, when it comes to people using curcumin for, you know, inflammation and pain. Okay, may support healthy bones and joints, uh, the issue of osteoporosis, blah, blah, blah. Essential fatty acids are recognized in scientific research as able to increase the amount of calcium you absorb from your gut, partly by enhancing the vitamin D effect and improve the strength of your bones and synthesis of bone collagen. Gee, it all goes together. Small randomized controls trials have, been, have seen an increase in bone density in older people with osteoporosis when supplementing with EPA compared with placebo groups whose bone density decreased over time. So that's really important. We can add that again to the arsenal. I could add it to my arsenal for bone strength, which always includes vitamin D3 and K, um, magnesium, DHEA. Uh, so, yeah. Another study found that due to their potential anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity, omega-3 threes may also help in ex improve exercise performance and assist in recovery might improve sleep quality and possible that children in particular may experience problems with sleep when they don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids in their diets. In adults, low omega-3 levels are associated with obstructive sleep apnea. Okay. A lot of people suffer from that. Huh? I gotta remember that because that's important. Hmm. Beneficial for infant and child development. Uh, it seems that infancy and childhood are some of the most important periods of time in a person's life to get plenty of omega-3s in the diet because probably because of the amount of long chain fatty acids found in the brain and retina. It's crucial for developing babies and children to get a good amount of DHA, DHA and EPA so their brains and eyes develop fully and properly. Pregnant moms need to be particularly aware of this because children with mothers who supplement with omega-3s during pregnancy score better on mental processing, psychomotor, hand-eye coordination, and audio processing tests at nine months and four years of age. These children also seem to have lowered ADHD risk. And these are huge problems in our childhood population today. It's possible that supplementing with EPA, ETA, and DHA could even help prevent cerebral palsy, autism spectrum disorder, and asthma in some children, and may fight menstrual pain. <clears throat> PMS cramps affect about 75% of menstruating. In fact, one study comparing ibuprofen and fish oil supplement during adolescent PMS found that the supplement actually worked better to relieve menstrual pain than the standard medication. We got to test that. I can't test that any longer, but I can find some guinea pigs who will do it for me. Linked to lowered macular degeneration risk, support healthy skin and slow aging. Uh, in some ways, omega-3 fatty acids protect your bone density in the same ways they can also help your skin stay beautiful from the inside out. E DHA and EPA both benefit your skin by managing oil production and naturally slowing aging. aging. Some in studies even show omega-3 benefits the skin by helping prevent acne and related inflammatory conditions. Oh, very, very, very key. So anyway, we'll talk about that. We talked about that. And now I want to go to this. I've only got five minutes left, but I want to go to um, the green lipped muscle stuff. So there you can see the history of the green lipped muscle. Well, I'll just go through the first paragraph of that. 
um, says, If you've heard of the remarkable health benefits of greenlit muscle extract, you may be curious to know a bit about greenlit muscle history and how its anti-inflammatory capabilities were discovered. New Zealand's indigenous Maori, Maori people have claimed for centuries that consuming these muscles raw has helped them maintain good health. But when and how did the scientists come across them? It was actually a search for ways to naturally treat cancer that led the scientists to the muscles way back in the 1960s. You're gonna have to read that because I'm short on time. So I wanna kind of hit on the the five benefits they found it didn't really bear out the cancer thing but if that's how they found out about its anti-inflammatory stuff for the um cartilage for the cartilage for your inflammation and your joints and all that stuff <clears throat> okay so here we go reduce inflammation no doubt the most number one Significant health benefit, the muscles have powerful anti-inflammatory capabilities. The ability to relieve joint pain and inflammation has earned lip, green lipped muscle extract a loyal following for the treatment of ailments such as arthritis and asthma. But where do these benefits come from? The muscles are a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, not just any omega-3 fatty acids as we've talked about, but a certain type of rare omega-3 called ETA, I'm not going to try to pronounce it again. The ETA in the muscles has been proven to have highly anti-inflammatory properties, more so than any other omega-3 sources, including fish oil. Uh, refer to this article. You can, you can go scroll down that rabbit hole. Okay. Squirrels and rabbits in the same. Oh. The fatty acids in the muscle extract when taken orally interact with the body's metabolic pathways and inhibit that which is responsible for producing inflammatory compounds. I'm all for that. Two, improve the condition of joint cartilage. As well as being high in omega-3 fatty acids, green-lipped muscles contain a unique and vital group of complex carbohydrates known as muc mucopolysaccharides, commonly referred to as MPS, and these days also called glycosaminoglycans. One of the things that the body uses glycosamino, glycosaminoglycans for is to build healthy joint carb, cartilage and lubricating fluid. Number three, protect the lining of the GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract. There's a lot of problems with that today with IBS and all of the related IBS uh, things. The muscles have been found to have a gastroprotective effect. This is beneficial for anyone who takes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which cause damage to the stomach lining when used for prolonged period, periods. It can also help mitigate the damage to the GI tract caused by chemotherapy and radiation. Four, keep free radicals in check. The muscles are recognized as a potent source of antioxidants. Antioxidants are needed by the body to neutralize free radicals so they don't create cell damage. When it comes to joint pain and inflammation, researchers have found a high concentration of free radicals in the joint fluid of unhealthy joints. Then five, a general anti-aging tonic and immunity booster. There are more, many more little known health benefits of green lipped muscles that people are unaware of and may be missing out on. These include one, healthier skin, nails, and hair. Two, reduced likelihood of heart attacks through strengthened arterial walls and blood flow. Three, increased resistance to viruses and bacteria and formation of antibodies to heal wounds faster. Four, stronger bones and teeth. Five, improved fertility through increased viscosity of seminal fluid in men and cervical mucus in women. And better, six, better nerve cell functioning. All these health benefits are due to the glyc glyc glycosaminoglycans. Um, in the muscles. Dr. Orville H. Miller, professor of pharmaceutical chemistry at the University of South Carolina, first identified the health improving properties of the glycosaminoglycans in the muscle back in the 1970s. The most important thing to know is that glycosaminoglycans are also found in the human body and play a significant role in metabolism, growth, and health. They work with other compounds to keep tendons, ligaments, skin, arteries, and all other tissues strong and resilient. And unfortunately, like many things in our bodies, they deplete as we age. Um, so that's super important. I would like to just point out um, now with our teas, we've talked about teas so much, but you will see in my newsletter there, we now have an option on our, our website to uh, purchase a little, oh gosh, I don't have time. I'm gonna go grab a sec. Oh.
I'm coming back. I'm, I'm back. I'm coming back. So we have in here one second. Actually, I could never do this at the radio station. Um, we have with the small jar, we've, we've uh, did a little experiment and found that our small jar holds about 12 cups of tea. And so we have a sack like this uh, with 12 for the small jar and with 24 for the large jar, because we found that out by experimentation too. How many tea bags can we get out of each jar? And uh, so that's an option now too, if you're not, if you're not used to working with um, bulk teas. And then I would just like to say, um, think about candles. We've been really focusing on our candles. This time of year is just um, a time when you just want to have the warm glow of a candle, a nice scent that's non-toxic. So um, think about those. I do have um, some products down there on my newsletter, the ones that I'm using um, myself, the uh, Perna and the Super Omega-3. We have a few other fatty acid supplements we've had available for quite a while. That is it. We are at one o'clock and I want to thank you for being with me. I just uh, hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did and uh, come back next time and stay in touch with me with your questions or anything at all. And um, thank you so much.